get everything else set up. Top of that. Turn my own headphones down. Oh, I'm like, why is it so up close? Oh, because I didn't reset my settings from when I was painting. Let's fix that. Because it does not need to be that close. There we go. That works. Okay. <laughs> Surprising absolutely nobody. I am a hot mess today, so I'm a little scattered um, for many, many reasons. Drink some water here real quick. So I think I mentioned this last week. So, you know, I finally got my piece of paper that says I have ADHD so I can take the drugs now. Yes, very many colors. Here, I'll put the finished sock up here so you can look at it while I ramble a little bit. I have the blue heavy version of this one as well. Um, so it's more of like this blue color than anything else. It's like this one and this is showing blue here, but it's more purple. I, I don't know why my phone hates purple. Um, but anyway, so ADHD, I finally get to take the drugs. Um, they help a lot. I'm like, I should be having a 30 day follow up. Why hasn't my provider contacted me? turns out he's not at that office anymore and that was a problem so they like squeezed me in monday at like 4 30 and i had to like do the video appointment from my office like with my phone because my um work pc the um 3.5 millimeter jacks are single source so if i have a headset with microphones i can't do anything like i can either hear or i can talk i can't do both and it really sucks um, so luckily we got that finished, but I only had one left. So I've been um, off the Adderall for a little bit and it is rough <laughs> today, especially. Um, also, the other reason I'm a little scattered uh, is oh, I've, there's another needle in there. Uh, my aunt is actually currently uh, undergoing brain surgery, like as I'm talking to you. So I'm a little uh, about that. I did, you know, text with my mom who's there with her um, right before stream. So it sounds like she's doing OK. Um, they didn't get started until like 3.30. And it's a three to five hour procedure. So uh, but they apparently um, they did say they're planning on wrapping up pretty soon. So it sounds like things are, are going as they they should. But I am still an anxious, anxious mess over that because it is my favorite aunt on my mother's side. I have a favorite hand on my father's side too. Um, but yeah, so yeah. And then, you know, I'm dealing with my kind of asshole coworker at work and yeah. So yeah, that's why I also have chocolate <laughs> ready to go. Um, that was a gift from my, um, the, the receptionist and one of my co-workers are also in the accounting department for my birthday yesterday. And they're like, I feel like you need chocolate. So they got me chocolate. It was very appreciated. But anyways, I have not worked on this since I last streamed it. So I need to remember where I'm at. So bear with me a moment. Because <laughs> I'm currently working on the gusset. I love how you say, oh yeah, Hootie, I have bad news, and then my bot immediately shouts you out. What is your bad news, Thomas? Let's see. Okay, I need to do this till there are 60 stitches on the needle. Bad news is that the bot thinks I'm worthy of shouting out. Well, it's because you're on my auto shout out list. <laughs> you and like 18 other people. All right, so this is my start of round here. JK, no, I didn't get the editing job. Oh, I'm sorry. Bad news is I'm on your auto shout out list for some reason. It's because you're my mod. <laughs> I mean, I can take you off of there if you want me to. All right, so what did I do on this last row? All right, so it looks like I'm just on a knit row right now. Yeah. Let's 
but we're just gonna knit until I get to this next needle here. Oop. I was planning on doing a different project, which I have posted on my TikTok and in my Discord and my Instagram, because um, I've started, you know, actively working on those. Uh, but I could not find my needle case to start that, and I didn't want to spend an hour, you know, digging through everything trying to find it, so I was like, eh, I have a backup project that I need to finish. <laughs> New, fine, I'll keep you on the auto shoutout list. If you insist. So Crowdad started dinner um, in the crock pot a while, like before I got home, obviously, and I can smell it and it's just like taunting me and I really want it because I'm very hungry today. Right, what did I do here last time? Because. In one of these, I need to decrease when I get to a row, and I think that's this one. All right, so let me take a look here. Because I don't remember where I'm at. That they apparently have an editing company they have a prepaid service with or something I'll send an email later which said thank you for my time and the information should keep my email on file if they're looking for an editor again well there you go it's not a bad thing let's see That's nice to hear that it's going well, to be able to say a lot more about how surgery went before she's been properly awake, how well she's breathing movement. Yeah. Yeah, the little bit I got is that she's stable and things are progressing smoothly. So that, you know, is good. My aunt is almost 70. <laughs> she's uh, 68, I think. Um, so I am just always concerned. And she also has um, MS. So it's always very, very concerning. And she's also the aunt my mom is closest to, and so it, it's a whole thing. Let's see. Knit to next marker. Knit to three stitches before marker. Okay, I see where I'm reading wrong here. Um, okay, I need to see... Again, bear with me. Like I said, I have not worked on this for a while. Okay, we are just knitting. Just straight up knitting. Because it wants me to have two markers. And it wants me to have one here and one on the opposite side. I only have one because why and then we'll do a quick count here to see how many stitches I'm at it is very toasty in here I might open my door up here in a little bit all right move my mouse out of the way a little bit all right let's Stab that. We'll do some math real quick. Come on. Oh, come on. Stop trying to run away from me. So we've got 30 up top. So in theory, we should have 30 on the bottom. One, two, three. Probably not, though, because now I'm remembering how this actually works. So there's 40. Eh. There we go. 
So 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 6, 7. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. Okay. So I messed up somewhere. I need to figure out where I messed up because I should have an even number of stitches, not an odd number. My double points are just fighting with me tonight. So I think what I did wrong is I'm supposed to do a decrease here. Because I'm trying to remember how I did this. And of course, I didn't write notes. Okay. Did you get a chance to practice the painting yet? I haven't. Um, I was planning on doing that a little bit later this week because uh, I have been watching some videos. So hopefully I will be less of a failure at it. All right, we're going to unknit a few stitches. Alrighty, so I believe, make sure I did not split these, no, we're good. I believe I'm supposed to, three stitches for a marker, knit two together, and then knit one, so that'll bring me to 66, so that means we just need to do three more rounds. Yeah, that looks correct. Okay. Okay, I see where I'm at now. I'm going to mark it. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. I did not hear your answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have not had a chance to practice just yet. Um, I was planning on doing that this week. Um, I'm going to see if I need to maybe get some different paints. Because um, I'm using uh, a watercolor palette. And I think maybe uh, tube watercolors might be a better idea. But I'm going to try you know, a couple different options this week. There we go. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the best way because, like, I don't want to paint something that's... Like, you know, I'm, I'm not super gifted at it, but I still don't want it to, like, look awful. Like, I don't want it to look like I made it with, like, you know, a dollar store, you know, Crayola palette or something. So I'm going to try to do some practice this week. I had actually considered doing that for stream tonight, but I'm too jittery to paint. Um, like, I need to be in a pretty calm state of mind to paint well. I'm a little concerned it's taking Crowdad this long. Because he was just going out to get stuff from his pharmacy and stuff from my pharmacy, and they're like right next door to each other. Alright, and then we are going to do a decrease here. go. All right. I remember what I'm doing. Because these two that are parallel with each other should have the same number of stitches at all times. So I believe got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, we are good. God, I am just struggling with yarn management tonight. It's probably because I'm just jittery.
And then once we are done shaping the gusset, then we will just knit the foot. Which for me isn't a, a whole bunch because I have tiny feet. Let's see, you need some hugs. Hope he gets back soon. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, Kismet. Yeah, I'm kind of like, where are you? It, our pharmacies aren't that far away. Chances are knowing his luck. So like anytime I go to pick up my stuff from our pharmacy, like the only waiting I have to do is if there's somebody in front of me or if the tech needs to get like the key to open, you know, the special cabinet from the pharmacist and like the pharmacist is doing something. Every single time Crodad goes, there is some snafu that causes him to have to like stay there for like 30 or 40 minutes. And like that's why we switched from where he was going to this uh, new place. He, for whatever reason, didn't use the same pharmacy I use, um, which, you know, would make life so much easier. But, you know. And it's like it's you know my camera is my phone so it's not like you can call me but i do have discord open and you notice to text me there all right we have knit to marker now we will knit until the last three stitches here but i was gonna do something what was it i was gonna enable a setting in obs real quick so bear with me one second is that what I want. Yeah, that's the dock that I want. Let's put that over there. Yeah, I'm putting some other docks up um, so I can keep a better eye on things. There we go. No, I want that to be there. There we go. <laughs> oh no, I can imagine some snappy with both, right? It's like he would have texted me if there was an issue. Because he's always been able to pick up my stuff for me, like even my like, you know, controlled substance stuff, like my Adderall. Like literally just look at it and go, oh, you're the spouse. Okay, cool. So I don't know. I'm hoping maybe he just like got distracted shopping or something. I'm actually going to text him because I am concerned. It's also very possible he snuck in while I wasn't paying attention. Because that is a half decent possibility. There we go. But yeah, in a little bit, um, I will grab, because I completely forgot to do it for a stream, I'll grab the yarn for the project I was intending to start tonight, but didn't get the chance to. my you know interchangeable needle set has vanished i'm pretty sure it's on the couch but our couch is a nightmare You know what I think the issue might be is? So originally I was supposed to, on my way home, pick up his stuff at the pharmacy because um, we thought his pharmacy closed at six. I get home about 5.30. I still have his uh, health insurance card in my wallet. <laughs> I would be shopping, friend at class has a new baby coming. Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I have my phone set on do not disturb because otherwise, you know, I'll have to scramble if he calls, but I don't know. Like I said, I am like just a high anxiety mess today. <laughs> so I'm actually, since I am such a high anxiety mess, I'm going to have a chocolate. That's what I meant to do. How do I open this? Is there a peel corner? There's a peel corner. You're gonna listen to me open chocolate. 
because I deserve it. Not like I don't have, you know, cake and cookies and things in my fridge right now. <laughs> um, we went to uh, Crumble Cookie to pick up stuff uh, again for my birthday and also just because I wanted it. So I've got a half dozen of those in my fridge. I hope Crow Dad isn't Crow Dad. Wow, Thomas. Wow. I'm glad I'm here in time for the snack. You are. Hello, Meat. How are you? I didn't get, like, time to properly say hello today because I was just all over the place. <laughs> You're fine, Tom. I'm obligated to give you a hard time. I have a 50-pound lab laying across my laptop because we're having thunderstorms. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I had a... Uh, uh, she was ever so slightly larger. I think she was about 60 pounds of lab mix who was terrified of thunderstorms. So I feel you and I commiserate. To be fair, she was terrified of most things. Maybe the fine precision knit was not the best idea tonight, but that's okay. This is all I've got right now. Actually, once I get to the end of this uh, section here, I will go grab some yarn and we'll do a quick show and tell because I haven't done that on stream yet because I have several new yarns. And they are very pretty. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming Hydrate, Severus. I will do so in just a moment. There we go. I'll just stab our yarn ball there. I will open my water bottle near the microphone so you can hear it. All right, I'm gonna hop up for just a couple seconds. I'm gonna go grab uh, some yarn so I can do a quick show and tell, because I realize I actually haven't done that with the new yarn I got. So I will be right back. I'm just gonna leave this screen on here. Be back in just a second. Alrighty, thank you for bearing with me. So, guess who's sitting on my couch right now and has been back for about 30 minutes? My husband. 
<sighs> Just, uh... <laughs> so he's fine. He's literally been sitting on the couch and not looking at his phone. <sighs> Anyways, yarn show and tell. So I'm just going to move this to the side for a second. Whoop, there we go. So I picked this one up. Um, oh, God, a couple weeks ago now. Um, this was my treat for putting up with my in-laws <laughs> uh, visit. So this, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it just yet. Uh, there's about 400 yards here. It's the same weight as this one. I think it's a little bit heavier, but not by much. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, what a yarnaholic. Welcome. You're just in time for yarn show and tell. <laughs> so this is one of their exclusive colorways. This is their July 22. <laughs> and so I actually got this at, um, what is it? Bizarre Girl Yarns, which is up in Port Townsend. They have an adorable shop. I love going there. Um, I have now kind of made it a point to go there every time we're up there. Um, if you've seen my uh, rainbow uh, pussy hat, that's where I got that yarn too. So yeah, this one I was just like, I need this in my life. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet, but we'll get there. Yeah, thank you. Looks like a snorkeling theme, right? It's very tropical. Oh, and there's Jake. Hello, Jake. And then this one is a little complicated so bear with me i need to get the rest of the yarn out of a plastic bag yeah, a little sea a little swimming stuff some kelp yeah all right bag down hope it doesn't blow away so this is a fade set from Suki Mountain Fibers that I am going to be making a faded sweater with. Um, this is what I was going to work on on stream tonight, but I can't find my interchangeable needles because <laughs> I need to swatch for this. Let's see. Hello, popping in to say hi while I do other things. You are awesome, by the way. Thank you, Jake. Always appreciate you just kind of wandering by whenever you got time for me. Yeah, so this one I'm excited about. I posted a like artsy TikTok Instagram reel with it um, with a guitar version of Sally's song because, you know, Halloween and all that. So this one is definitely going to be on stream once I find all of my stuff. <laughs> uh, but if I've done my math right, this should be enough for a me size sweater. So I'm excited about that. See, I can knit rectangles, never even knitted a sock. Yeah, um, I'm still not great at knitting socks and I've been knitting for closing in on 25 years. It is only like relatively recently I've been able to um, do it with any sort of proficiency. Mostly because there are just many, many, many more resources and options out there than when I started. How long do you think the sweater will take you? That is a great question. <laughs> um, if I work on it monogamously, I'm hoping maybe a month, month and a half. Um, that's why I'm starting it now versus in September. Um, you know, it'll honestly kind of depend on my attention span for it. Because normally I would knit a sweater with, I'm seeing if I have any worsted weight yarn nearby or even a thicker yarn. All of it's sock yarn. Why? Why do I have so much sock yarn? Uh, this will do. This is a very dusty hat. So normally I would knit it with a yarn that's about this weight, so it's thicker than... I'll put this next to it. You can see it's, you know, thicker than this. And this usually takes me about... If I were to do a sweater in worsted weight, which I've done a few times, um, that would take me about a month or so. Let's see, monogamously, yes. <laughs> um, so right now, the only other project I have currently cast on, and this is a first for me, is the Rainbow Pussy Hat, um, which I just need to finish doing the cast off for, which is a little 
or bind off or whatever, which is a little finicky. Um, and then this. Normally I have at least five to six projects going at one time. So this is like progress for me. <laughs> and I also have like Halloween cross stitch I'm planning on doing because uh, I go hard into the spooky season. Like not, you know, ridiculously hard into it like some people, but I it is one of my favorite holidays. So that's why I have also started playing horror games. Because <laughs> I think I need to get a heads up on that. Why do I have glitter on me now? Where did I get glitter from? All right, three stitches before marker. Eh. Let's see, did I decrease last round? I didn't, okay, fabulous. We're on track. Come on. There we go. But yes, having multiple projects going at the same time, you know, depending on who you talk to, is sometimes called polycraftual. Um, you can also use that term if you do more than one fiber art. So in that term, I am also polycraftual because, you know, I knit, I crochet, I weave, I spin, I do a ton of fiber arts. Or multi-craftual, but I prefer polycraftual. Because there's the joke that if you knit and crochet, you're bi-craftual and anything beyond that is polycraftual. Let's see here. I'm gonna mess with some settings real quick. Turn that up a wee bit. There we go. And we'll turn this up a wee bit as well. All right, there we go. It smell like perfume in here. That's weird. Turn around briefly and see if something spilled. Oh, that would be why. <laughs> there are some scented uh, cleaning wipes that are ever so slightly open. And since it's warm in here, that is what I am smelling. I was like, am I like having a very fancy stroke? Am I smelling perfume instead of toast? Nope. Oop. Almost split a stitch there. just a wee bit there we go yeah i'm trying to think of you know besides the topics that are making me incredibly anxious right now like if there's anything new and exciting going on and honestly not really um you know i can go off on my tangent about my 
jerk co-worker, but I will do that in a little bit here. Um, yeah, it's been, you know, kind of luckily pretty quiet. You know, I'm going to knock on wood here real quick. I need less chaos in my life, but, you know, there is a full moon this week. And as I have stated many, many times on my stream, I'm pretty sure that once you're over the age of 60, you become a werewolf. Because all, I wouldn't say all, but usually large chunks of my client base who are over 60 just hit pants on head insanity around the full moon. And I'm not sure why. It is what it is. And for whatever reason last week, like all of my phone calls were like very easy. Everyone was very nice. But all of my emails were just like angry, nasty grams. And I'm like, what are like who pissed in your Cheerios? It wasn't me. The nice thing about emails, though, is I can just be like, I'm not dealing with you right now and, you know, just kind of leave it there. So I picked up something from one of my other co-workers where he's like, if I get an email and there's nothing actionable in it for me to do, I don't do anything. And I'm like, if you can do that, then I can do that. And it has removed quite a bit of stress. It's like if there's no question in there, if there's nothing that I need to do on my end of things, then I just don't respond to it. Like, you know, for example, anytime I send the monthly billing statements, I always get a response back of like, I received my statement and I'm like, cool. You, you didn't need to tell me that. I can see that you received it because it didn't bounce back. But, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, my jerk co-worker um, played stupid games and won stupid prizes for me last week. And is now basically reaping what he's sown. And it's basically one of those so like with the other property managers they have a very particular way they do things and it makes my life very easy um, if one of them has something he wants me to do in an email that is like a response with somebody else on it he will highlight my name in red so i just scan for red in the emails and you know if i see that i'll be like cool i'll go do whatever it is after that um, if there's nothing that he needs me to do he won't you know do anything sometimes he just cc's me on stuff so i have habit um like if he needs me to like transfer funds he will literally just send me an email with the approvals attached and he's like go for it and i'm like sweet less work i have to do and you know same with our other property manager uh, we have three four technically um and you know sometimes i have to chase after her for stuff but she always responds when i do that if i'm like hey where's the thing i need it she's like oh Sorry, here it is. Or, oh, let me get that for you. So it's, you know, nothing. Yeah. Dealing with them is not difficult, and I know what to expect. Um, with the third property manager, he's just never really assimilated to our policies. And I, me and my co-workers have to keep reminding him we are not his assistants and he needs to do his own work like everybody else. Um, and it is very, very frustrating. Because it's like, one, you have the lowest client portfolio. You have like nine, ten, where our other managers have 30. 
and you know have multi you know aggressive projects going on and just a lot and he has the same level of he's actually more experienced than one of our property managers he's in the middle so you would think but anyway so he hasn't figured out our policies and so he tries to circumvent them all the time and it just makes things really really messy and so he wanted me to pay something last month and every time he would email me about it it would be a different email and it would reference something that was similar but not quite so i thought they were all separate things i'm like you know hold on i'll just do these all together and then, you know, the person who was supposed to be paid was emailing me and I'm like, hey, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, you know, finally I was like, you know, hey, it's out the door, you know, sorry. There was a whole mess of communication on this. You know, here you go. No big deal. So the guy emails back and, you know, he was super pissy about it. And I'm like, okay, well, this is not my problem because your property manager did not communicate effectively. So he can go ahead and respond to that. So I just, you know, ignore it because I'm like, there's nothing actionable for me in this. Um, and then he emailed me at like 430 and he's like, hey, this is for you. You need to do this. And I'm like, no, I don't. And so he went and cried to my kind of sort of supervisor. Like, I don't really have a supervisor. We just have the in-house accountant who kind of oversees what we do, but not really. And she was just like, oh my god. And she's like, can you just deal with this? And I was like, <sighs> I'm like, because you asked, yes. He's not going to like how I'm going to deal with it, though. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, you'll see the email. So, you know, I responded back to the guy and I was like, you know, hi, such and such. You know, I completely understand your frustration and your concern. Let me explain to you how policy is supposed to go. You know, I explained policy of like your property manager is supposed to email you uh, or rather you are supposed to send your stuff to your property manager. Your property manager will then go to the board for approvals. Once those approvals are, you know, acquired, it will be sent to me for auditing and then paying. Um, and I'm like looking back at our communications, it appears that this policy was not followed. I will endeavor to work with such and such to ensure he sticks to policy going forward. Anything that is not received in this policy will not be dealt with in a timely manner. You know, let me know if you have any um, further thoughts or concerns. And, you know, this is kind of a very boiled down version. But basically, I was like, look, your property manager fucked this up and it's not my problem. But because he's such a little crybaby, he has to, you know, I'm now having to like clean up after him and I'm not happy about it because I'm not his goddamn assistant. I'm a bookkeeper. And so, yeah, like I sent it to my kind of sort of supervisor and I was like, what do you think? And she's like, well, he wanted you to deal with it and you're dealing with it. He can't be mad. And, you know, shocked Pikachu face, he got mad and she basically told him, well, you know, you didn't want to deal with it. So you can't be mad when that's the response. You had every ability to do this yourself and chose not to. Let's see, did I do the thing? Are we just knitting? I have lost my place. Okay, yeah, now we need to knit two together. Knit one. So, you know, I'm just like, whatever, dude. I don't have the energy or the crayons to explain to you how to do your job. And it's like, and I've only been in this industry for like three years now. A little more, a little less. I don't really remember. Um, and so, hooray, sock! Yes, hello, Jammy. You showed up in time for sock and bitching. <laughs> and I think I messed something up here, so I'm actually going to slide these stitches back and do a little counting. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so yeah, I should decrease this once I get to it. So they will match. God, it is very warm in here. <laughs> I 
I am also knitting a sock. Excellent. We can all knit socks together. Yeah, I really need to finish this one. And I'm like, I will finish a pair of socks. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, so, you know, it, it is what it was, what it was on Friday. Um, today, he emailed me something and he's like, hey, did you do this? And I'm like, and I just was like, uh, no. So I went immediately before responding to my kind of sort of supervisor. And I was like, hey, um, he's asking me to do stuff out of policy again, and I'm no longer comfortable doing it this way. Um, and she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, basically none of our stuff is going through our system because he can't prioritize and he can't figure out, you know, when things are an emergency and when they're not. And he keeps trying to jump the line. And I'm like, you know, of course, if it's an emergency, like, you know, we get a, oh no, the insurance is about to be canceled if we don't pay right now communication, then yeah, of course I'll do it. But for just regular, you know, payments, no, it needs to go through our system. Let's see, doing gusset decreases for hopefully the last time. Just said a bit ago, I can knit squares slash rectangles and tubes, but never learned how to make a sock. Yeah. I think I was maybe 10 or 12 years into knitting before I attempted socks and my first ones were very bad. <laughs> I knit the whole thing twisted so I was knitting through the back loop and I tried to make them for my husband and he has you know size 11 feet and that was a big mistake on my part. And then we will slip slip knit. Now we're matching. Um, and then when I did the toes, so like the toes are supposed to be, you know, the toe um, stitch is supposed to be a sandwich. I made an elevator door so it went this way instead of, you know, horizontally. So the toe went from, you know, the top of the foot to the bottom of the foot. So yeah, I like, I, I don't even know where those went. I think our, my dog destroyed them years and years and years ago, but they were hilarious and I didn't touch socks again for like another four years. <laughs> Let's see, I tried socks when I was still a kid, but all I had was worsted weight acrylic. Yeah. <laughs> socks are like tubes with an elbow. <laughs> Yeah, I had to find specific heels that work for me. And also, like, I really had to find um, short rows that worked for me, like wrap and turn short rows. My brain could not, like, grok the concept and it could not. Um, it I didn't like the look. And so then I learned about German short rows and it opened up a whole new world to me. See, I don't think I understood the concept of gauge at the time, but I figured out how to adapt the pattern to worsted and made a passable slipper. Well, there you go. Yeah, my original uh, plan for tonight was to make a gauge swatch for a sweater, but I can't find my interchangeable set. It is somewhere and I don't know where. Let's see here. I'm going to do a quick count because I think we might be done with the gusset, but let me check. Let's see, the pattern I had access to had a heel flap and gusset that felt really good to achieve as someone who mainly made scarves. Yes, absolutely. So and I've got 30 up here. One, three, two, three, three, four, three, five, three, six, three, seven. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 61. Hmm. What am I messing up here? We're going to do another recount because I'm like, I feel like I missed something because our amounts match here and they should match. We know we've got 30. We 
31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So I've got 14, so that'll be 44. 5, 4, 6, 4, 7, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. Yeah, I'm off by 1. So we will just... Did I already... Yeah. Thank you. I have seven on each, so I think what we're going to do, and since these are for me, I ultimately don't care if they fully match up. That is fine by me. I don't feel like they did on the first one. So what we're going to do Is we're just going to decrease one over here. I'm going to grab one from the bottom and when we get around to this side we will move our stitches to do the foot. And chances are I just forgot to do a um, decrease somewhere or I did an extra one or something. It's, it's fine. It's whatever. I'm not super worried about it. Let's see, my mom used to make horribly itchy sweaters out of cheap acrylic yarns, even sent me one with a choke-worthy neckline after I'd been moved away by over a year. Kind of made me feel icky about knitted stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I feel you on that. I hear that a lot among um, knitters and, you know, children of knitters. That's why I'm very, very picky about acrylic when I do use it. I definitely have a preference for natural fibers and wool, but you know, I will use acrylic on occasion for specific things. Ooh, I can feel a headache coming on. That doesn't feel good. Once I get this all straight away, I'll probably take a quick break and go find some Tylenol or something. Okay, let's see. All right, there's our last decrease. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming Hydrate. I will do so in just a moment. Okay, no, it's the decrease here that I have to, on this side, I have to do. Okay, okay. Nope, we were not off. All is well. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we will get to here, do a decrease. And then we will do everything. Okay, I'm just looking at the pattern, making sure. Let's see, the stress, emails, etc. Don't forget your vitamins tomorrow. Yes, of course. <laughs> I have my vitamins actually at work, so I don't forget to take them. And Crowdad was successful in picking up my meds from the pharmacy, so all is well. And he got his own, which is also good. And, you know, I did tell my mom, hey, I'm going to be streaming. If you need to get a hold of me, you know, call Crowdad. Because, well, he doesn't look at texts at all, despite the fact that's how we primarily communicate. Um, if his phone, if he does get a phone call, he will answer it most of the time. So chances are 
they probably haven't released her from surgery until right around now and she'll be in recovery for mm, an hour or so so the timing should work out well i mean she's not there by herself my you know my aunt's husband my uncle is there so it's not like she's dealing with this all on her own it's just my uncle is he's a very very sweet man but like he doesn't deal well with like highly emotional things or under pressure um not in a bad way it's just he's very um how to put this i don't know how to put this nicely um well it's not nicely it's just i'm not sure the right word um he is not afraid to feel his feelings um and that unfortunately does make him kind of vulnerable in high stress um, scenarios. And I do really appreciate that about him though. Like if you met him, like he seems very like gruff and standoffish, but he is not at all. He's very sweet. All right, and then we will do our decrease here making sure yes this particular stitch is a little tight let's try to loosen that up a little there we go all right so i think we're at 60 now <laughs> a sensitive person yeah yeah i feel like sensitive especially when talking about men kind of has a um negative connotation but that might also just be, what's the word I'm looking for? That might just be my experience with that. Um, but yeah, no, he's very sweet. I love him very much. Um, he's a very good man. And I was very, so both him and my aunt are widowers. Um, his wife, you know, passed many, many years ago. Her husband passed many, many years ago. Um, and they kind of, they've been friends for a really long time. And it was one of those, like, you know, ships passing in the night thing. It just never worked out. And so, you know, a year or two after my uncle passed, he was like, hey, you know, do we want to give this a shot? And I was like very suspicious of him <laughs> for a very long time. <laughs> um <laughs> like he knew that <laughs> uh but no i i would say like next to my aunt he's like my next closest relative he's very sweet a man who has not been browbeaten into never expressing emotions correct <laughs> and he has a daughter uh two daughters actually um i have only ever met the one the other one you know they don't like, he talks to her, but she lives, like, across the country somewhere. But my other cousin by marriage is, like, if you were to look up lumberjack butch lesbian, actually not lumberjack, nautical butch lesbian, that would be my cousin and her wife. <laughs> and they're adorable and I love them. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see here. Alright, so we're going to move some stitches around because we want... 15 on each of these side needles. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop, 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 eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eighteen. 14 and 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I should probably explore a nautical aesthetic. <laughs> uh, well, happy to put that out there for you. Yeah, she's um one of them. I cannot remember what she does. Um, I know it's something in finance, but the other one is a harbor master. But 
that might be good for me. There you go. And there's many flavors of nautical aesthetic. Like you got tons to play with in there. All right. Let's do that. All right. So we're going to move my stitch marker up. Why are you sticking? Don't stick. There we go. Just so I have a touchstone of where my round begins and ends. All right, I'm going to take a quick couple minute break here because um, I'm going to go run and grab some Advil or ibuprofen or whatever I've got. Um, so I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Now's a great time for y'all to go get some water if you need it or snack. Not going to judge. I've got snacks. I've got water. So I'll be back in just a moment. 